Well met lords and ladies, Jacob Butter speaking in a warm warm welcome to this week's Walking Wednesday. And if you notice that I'm quite tired, I'll get that in a second. Um, before I get into the main topic of this video, I know a few people are going to be asking about the, uh, the work that I've been doing for not Denethor, the other person who I think I said I was going to call Theoden, I'm not sure. But basically, yeah, that's that has completed. And as far as I'm aware, it was used in a presentation by that company yesterday, because that's when they needed it by. So what happened was, the, the issue that I was having was that of all to do with voiceover, I end up trying to contact a few uh, voice actresses because they because basically the client wanted a female voice with an English accent to be able to say the lines of the video, which which was fine. And then after I gave the demos of four different people, none of them were liked, and so then that it was the CEO was going to uh, voice. The, th the, the, the thing and then I didn't receive anything from him on the next day and then the day after which happened to be the day just before was coming out and all this time of course they were asking about progress reports and things but of course I can't progress until the voice lines are there because if you have something to sync the audio to then then good that's when it become that's when you can make progress beyond, I guess, designing a few images and generating that kind of thing, which I had to redo because they changed a few things on their presentation they sent me without letting me know. So just as well that I was checking thoroughly. So yeah, that was all there, and I ended up, I ended up going, um, I ended up staying up until. 5:30 a.m. because I was trying to make sure that everything rendered version with and without royalty-free music that I could use. So in the end, it was sent out, and it seems that they preferred the version with music, which means they received both of them, and that was all. That was all fine. I got the classic request editor access from from the CEO, despite the fact that I. Or he said anyone with the link can open or something like that. Or the editor thing that would have worked. I don't know. Google Drive is one of those things that keeps coming up as far as uh as far as, you know, just a few little bits of trivia about it. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. But yeah, that was a couple of days ago. I didn't really recover too much yesterday because What's Up Unicorn posted a movie. And I thought, hey, strike while the iron is hot. So I'm still a little bit sluggish, but that's not the major thing, because that's not what the title of the video is going to be. I don't exactly know what the title is going to be, it's probably going to be something on the lines of the evolution of Minecraft roleplays or something like that. The blanket term of Minecraft roleplays, I don't know. Something along those lines. The many interpretations, yeah, whatever. I'll work it out later. Point being that on that same day, it just so happened, I'd, I'd sep I separated Sunday out to board to edit the, um, the video because I didn't get the voiceover, I wasn't able to do that much. And then Monday happened to be the same day that we were supposed to be filming the next episode of Drama Club. Yes, we're making that into, well, we were making that into a weekly thing. It's now gone into, arbitrarily, it's gone into the, the two-week territory, which I'm still wondering about, but I will get to that in a second, because I think the reason for that is because the recording that took place on that exact same day went very, very wrong. Now, Bibi has mentioned to me that, from what she's seen, every episode has gone wrong to some degree thus far. And there's probably some truth to that, with the exception, I think, of episode three and i've just realized that i can just go i've i found a way better path to get to where i was uh, heading before without so many cars so i'm gonna go back exactly the same way i came yeah i mean episode three 
you haven't seen you well i mean some of you might have seen it because i accidentally add it to the playlist so therefore you can see the unlisted video as it came out i don't know why people aren't being notified about those but 10 people saw that uh saw that video so i guess uh thanks to those 10 people who found that uh that leaked content not the intention but there you go i say it, that's the nature of leaks but it's, it's not people leak them on purpose all the time so yeah so to those of you who haven't seen that video which you can't anymore it's private i will publish it as soon as aiden finishes editing his perspective and we can publish those on the same day possibly also wait for ghosty but ghosty's ordering a different upload schedule to us as far as drama club goes so we'll see i'll, I'll get back to you on that um but yeah so to those of you who haven't seen that video Essentially, the only thing that really went wrong, as far as I know, was a little bit at the end where I was, uh, last, this was last week's film, not this week, where a, a little bit of a tension arose over, over a certain, the, the cinematic aspects of, of that roleplay. Not that there were many, it was just, there was just one scene at the end where we were like, okay, well... This character showed up here, so let's let's do something with that. But everyone else has gone home, so yeah. And I won't I won't give away too much in regards to that because again, watch the video when it comes out. But yeah, it just took a while to really organize that and get the blocking and <laughs> BB getting accustomed to not moving around constantly and saying age appropriate things for. The, for my channel, which the cinematic would also be going on, does really help things. But so 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 that so that was really all that went wrong in episode three. The other episodes all had far worse catastrophes, and that's what BB's been observing, because <laughs> admittedly, BB wasn't actually there for most of episode three. I'm not going to make any sort of statement about that. I'm just, that's just a funny observation. I'm not saying that BB's responsible, because she's not. So, and, and, and actually, well, I mean, it, it depends. We all share some of the responsibility for different situations. The first situation really was, I don't think it was too much of our fault. It was just to do with actual lag. I don't think the major scenes themselves were too much of an issue, apart from... I think I mentioned this in another Walking Wednesday, how BB saw the Minecraft roleplay structure we were doing as being so very starkly different to what she was anticipating. Which, of course, I will have more to say about in the Evolution of Minecraft roleplay section, what this video is titled after. Episode 2 was also, was also a case of... Um, how to put this? How to put this? Um, yeah, it was. It was. Um, it was a case of we tried filming things the BB way, and that really sent Aiden down a spiral. And as far as I'm aware, the the the, the core people who stayed in the one area and did one take throughout the whole thing had a far worse time behind the scenes. Now, from what I remember from watching the actual episode, the editing turned out all right. But obviously, obviously on a, on a mental health level, not exactly a good sign when, when the, uh, the, lead, the lead director and main brains behind the show is telling people, this is not working for me. So we went back to the old style for episode three, and that is still the most functional one that we've had thus far. And I was very optimistic we were back on track for episode four. We were not. So what happened was we ultimately ended up with a few people who hadn't been in the show prior to it and two POVs that we couldn't use because one, one person didn't show up. So the script was accounting for their character existing in there. 
which is my fault. I should have think, I thought, okay, they haven't been there for a while. Let me just, I thought it was because it was lack of notification last time, but no, there must be something else. So I should have checked that. But because that one character wasn't there, we had to scrap part of the, the Leicester POV scene that was supposed to take place. And therefore it needs to be combined with Tori's one. And that, but I actually had a plan for how that was going to go down. Without giving too much away, at one point, at one point, Tori leaves, goes to join a different character. Um, and then that same character's other, so the bully friends come around looking for the other character, talking to Lester. That other person goes to Tori, and it's Tori's cue to leave, because Lester points to them. So it takes place in the same location, but you hear two different things. And I thought, okay, we can get that done, problem solved. Issue being that, it, uh, well, I mean, there were, there were several things. At one point, at one point, one of the actors actually stopped a scene entirely because of the, uh, because of the punny nature of some of the dialogue that was going on. And then at another point, there was a, uh, a fist fight that broke out, which kind of disrupted the cues. Another person forgot one of the characters' names and actual relationships, so saying where, you know, a certain line did not make sense, and therefore it was impossible to progress the scene until that was sorted out. So it was meant to be a very simple process, so that uh, two other actors could come back into the main call, ended up being ended up being an hour and a half, I think, of trying to actually get this one situation right. And I'll tell you, that does actually happen sometimes in, like, on film sets. I remember when I was actually on a film set as a location runner, that we actually spent the entire day setting up for about 30 seconds, a minute of footage for this movie. Um, I mean, partly the scene had to be filmed at night, but also we were there, we were there from very early in the morning trying to sort certain things out, which even by, even by the standards of film sets, I found that bizarre, but that's an extreme example. That was when they had to bring in props and sets and everything. We already had the location sort of sorted, but now I feel like the location is kind of cursed, not gonna lie. That's where the episode one issues also happened. I I really I really don't know. But yeah, so it does happen on film sets, but if you're not used to that, you're not expecting that going in, especially because, you know, I advertised it as, okay, this is going to be very quick, because I will, as it as it would have been. But no, we end up uh, here, so... Because, as I mean, so a few aspects were confusing to some people. Other stuff was... It was essentially an issue with, with cues. Because there were several different cues. This is... Where, when you're doing improv role plays, you're not expecting that. But there were several different cues to make the POVs both work. And, and some of the time, those didn't get hit in the correct order. Sometimes other stuff happened, so... And a lot of people seem to be, I guess because the only person who had the idea of what it was supposed to look like was me, as the, as the director of that scene, because Aiden wasn't ever involved with that, so he was in the other VC. So as the director of that, I had the vision, and people seem to be either confused about what they were doing, so I had to explain the situation, what they had to do specifically to them, like what their character was, was involved with. And so that confused other people as to what was happening. And some of them start off in different places, and it was just a mess. And my philosophy, of course, is don't break character while the scene's going on. Keep, keep rolling, see if it can be salvaged later, if nothing else happens, which is what, exactly what we end up doing. But yeah, because of that, at one point, actually two people end up rage quitting. One of them actually had to go anyway. But another one, 
Uh, another one, the, uh, he, that was the, the sad part was that Tory's POV was concluded to be a mistake. But, um, which is just not the takeaway that I want to have. Like, if anything, I'm, like, it was my idea to combine those two things there, because I was the one in charge of that scene, and making that work with the actors that we had. And also giving some of the actors some purpose. That was another mistake that I did. Like, okay, let's give them some purpose and juice some people early to make these concepts work. Like, I could have just waited. That was also an option. But I thought, well, people are here, so I might as well make use of them. And then poor Shorty didn't even get end up doing anything. So that was a fail in itself. So... On all accounts, a complete and total wash. And um, and it eventually concluded because we were we were we were like okay, well we've done versions of this. We actually did end up finishing that scene, only to have immediately as soon as as soon as Aiden was available, he ended up leaving and saying let's let's keep let's pick this up in two weeks. And you know since. So he's the main brains in charge. We can't do anything unless unless he's there for the rest of that ha- that whole episode. So we were kind of stuck. So yeah, he wants to talk to people one on one about this stuff, but also hasn't prepared what he wants to say. What is going to mean? It's going to be less fresh in his mind. I don't really know. And he actually missed a lot of discussions that we had that also inspired my talk about the evolution of Minecraft role plays that I was going to do in this video, until it turned out to be just explaining what went wrong with Drama Club. I'll just make that a separate video essay, actually, because it is an interesting topic. But yeah, the actual evolution of Minecraft roleplays that, um, that I promised, that main part, I guess I can actually pause here because I'm, I'm going to go past the time limit, so I might as well. But the reason I'm talking about that is because, like, there's several different expectations people had and several things that they said never went wrong or things that would not work for this project that I need to talk about, obviously, as one of the, as one of the writers and also the, basically the assistant director or the, or the deputy director when Ada's not in a scene. I need to make sure that that's actually clear because the objective of the scene... Well, the, of, the, of the whole series seems to not be clear depending on who you're talking to so here is the message to you based on the evolution of Minecraft roleplays and why Drama Club is the way that it is and pause welcome back so we start our journey with the evolution of Minecraft roleplays with the Minecraft dad himself Paul Soros Jr people don't know who Paul Soros Jr. is, he was one of the first people to actually make videos in Minecraft. He had several series and several tutorials as well talking about how to play the game in the first place. So he's actually really responsible for basically everything. I think he might have also been the first Minecraft YouTuber to reach a million subscribers, but I don't know. I'm not actually sure about that. But either way, he pioneered a lot of things, actually. And one of the things that he could have pioneered is... What is that sound? There's a motion sensor or something. Um, yeah, so one of the things that he did pioneer, or possibly pioneered, was... The, a particular style of Minecraft roleplay. Possibly Minecraft roleplays themselves. I don't know. Again, I haven't seen everywhere. I think also, you know, Yogg's cast can have some claim to that as well. But and in fact, Paul Soros Jr. was actually friends with Yogg's cast at the time. Or maybe even still, I don't actually know. So, so yeah, the, um, and that actually, also if you're talking about Tales of Seneca North as well, because I mentioned before, Paul Soros Jr.'s first um, was, well, Minecraft roleplay of that particular style the first one might have been Man vs. Minecraft, I think, which is actually another thing where where he actually decided a character that he was going to play throughout the uh, Pablo Punchwood. And and yeah, he was essentially was uh, his survival of Minecraft, but he was actually doing it as if he were 
an actual person strand in the game, which as far as I understand from BB, is similar enough to the actual lore of Minecraft. So who knows if they got that idea from him or not. But yeah, I haven't seen a lot of Man vs. Minecraft, admittedly. It is one of those things that blends survival and just, you know, role-playing as well. That's the thing. The term Minecraft roleplay has progressed so much that it now it, it now doesn't resemble itself. I mean, Aphmau said at one point that what she made was Minecraft anime. And that was sort of a, a, it was a half joke because that was on stream and such, but it actually makes sense. Because the, well, I mean, I'll get to that. But back in the day, Minecraft roleplayers simply were people roleplaying in Minecraft whilst playing the game. And that's what Paul Story Jr. started. The one that I really want to talk about, of course, is Tale of Kingdoms, which started in 2011. Yeah, I said I was going way back, and that's, that was, that's correct. So 2011 to 2013, Sir Punchwood, which according to the Paul Jr. wiki is actually the father of Pablo Punchwood, actually debuted as a, uh, a knight going through Tale of Kingdoms. And because Tale of Kingdoms is a mod that allows for a total conversion of of the game, he did a, the Paul did a bit of a showcase of what it looked like when he first boosted up the game. And then afterwards he said, okay, well I'm going to actually immerse myself and play through this because it has a bit of a story to it. It has objectives, which means that there's a clear goal in mind, and therefore is really good grounds to make a story. So that's exactly what happened. And looking back, of course, some of the episodes are definitely dull, especially by today's comparisons. A few situations where nothing too much happens. However, I'm sure that nowadays you could compare that to the roleplay style in Minecraft SMPs. The difference, of course, being that there's several different bombastic personalities to bounce things off of, rather than having one person having to either speak to the camera, come out of character, or give life to a bunch of NPCs and try to, uh, try to impose personalities onto them based on a few AI quirks that there were. And that's exactly what Tale of Kingdoms was. And for the time, it was, it was pretty amazing. I loved it. I've watched it through, like, I, uh, twice, all the way through. Even, even though I, I never saw it when it was actually first airing, I actually, I actually for a while was uh, watching the Minecraft Dad series on Paul Soros Jr.'s channel. That was my first intro really into not only Minecraft content, but also YouTube itself as a, uh, as a pastime, uh, for a consumer that is. But yeah, after that, I said I've returned to Portal Jr. at one point after Tale of Kingdoms had already finished and was able to binge watch the whole thing. And uh, and yeah, I was I loved it to the extent that I actually my first ever Wattpad fan fiction was about Tale of Kingdoms and its prequel series, Legend of Hoodie, which features the character of Hoodie the Mage, um, who was um, and how he actually had a journey to actually save the world, but also some things that tied into a little bit of the lore that was included in Tale of Kingdoms by, com by complete accident. Well, not by complete accident, but it was done in Legend of Hoodie, but by Tale of Kingdoms, there were certain things like, for example, the, uh, the idea, of, the, idea of, of the Baker Lady being a witch, Nancy the Witch, actually ended up becoming canon. <laughs> and... Uh, and then, but that she ended up actually being the main antagonist of Legend of Hoodie right at the end, and literally the end, because it was the end dimension where the final, the finale took place. And then afterwards, letter from King Punchwood asking for assistance, and off Hoodie was summoned to become the very person. And then a few times, he even gets Sir Punchwood interfering and coming in because Hoodie is telling this this story as well um, in, in, in real time in, in a pub just after the events of Tale of Kingdoms itself only to then afterwards tease the idea of Sir Punchwood taking over again 
choosing a different hero to go on a different adventure into a whole new dimension for Lord of the Rings. Which unfortunately did not conclude. And the last episode that actually aired was eerily enough Sir Punchwood trying to emerge from the bottom of the ocean. So my personal headcanon is that he drowns, but that I, who knows? And yeah, that was all that all concluded, I think, around 2014, actually. Which of course just so happens to be around the same time that I came up with well that I managed to find out how to use mod pack launchers because it used to be a thing where downloading and installing mods was a huge issue for me I found out how to do that and it just so happens that I had the prototype for a little series called Fortius Pascal all about a young mage slash wizard on his own developing his magic powers to eventually fulfill some sort of mission oh boy so yes Basically, a lot of my Minecraft roleplays, all the way back from 2014, which never actually properly aired. That's what, if you look on my channel, there's one episode that I, I brought out that's called Season Zero, that's not canon. I then revamped Fortius Pascal once, actually, also in 2014. I figured out, finally, what the issue was with the uploads that I had, and was able to manually go through certain files, or actually just process them in general, because... Easy vid actually finally decided, decided to work for me. Easy vid being my web capture software at the time. So, yeah, and at the time, Forgeous Pascal Season 1, very surprisingly, was actually um, a favorite on the channel. It would it, argue today, out of the three series that were happening around that time, it's actually had the, uh, the least viewership, but as far as like actual responses and feedback went, Forgeous Pascal was the one that seemed to raise the most until Legend of Tid took its place, which was also me role-playing in a similar style to Paul Soros Jr. So, basically, this was, uh, all of that stuff is a testament, of course, to my pre afmal phase, but also to the legacy of ideas that Paul left behind, because, obviously, while I didn't have too much of an impact, obviously, on the landscape of Minecraft roleplays in general. It's safe to say that Paul did. Yet other people who watched his content or were around YouTube at the time were making strides in their very own way. Including such people, I guess you could also say there were different styles popping up around this time. I think of what could be considered Minecraft roleplays by today, but weren't called that yet. Exploding TNT's content, which also started around this same era, were actually involved the hiring of actors and use of a few mods and stuff to come up with, a, with scripted sketches, none of which were voice acted, but they were, they were fully performed out and directed by Exploding TNT in, in real time. And eventually it actually worked out, and that was the first time when people actually started using the inclusion of other YouTubers and such, because it was non-voice acted. It's similar enough to how gacha creators treat, you know, other gacha tubers, the well-known ones, where they sometimes bring them into, into, the, into gacha itself, or actually make them full stop. You know, uh, Bill Gates featured in one particular video of uh of exploding tnts not to mention also that was like right, right around the same time that microsoft purchased minecraft i think so yeah very topical but yeah though <laughs> the actual thing um the the and then of course after that there was the uh the text-to-speech prankster gangster known as pink sheep that emerged from one particular video and then he went on to have his own spin-off and his son had his own spin-off and then uh, which also involved failboat which i guess also could be considered a different type of role play but more of the minigame style role play that has been mentioned which also could have been making ways but was also not, also not called minecraft role plays they were just called 
They're just called Minecraft mini games. This is where I, I do have to bring up Sky does everything or Sky does Minecraft as, as they were known back at that point. But uh, but so so, so yeah, and uh, and obviously the whole of Team Crafted, and then Sky Media afterwards, 2015-ish time, when the Breakfast Brigade became a thing. But also around 2015 was the time when uh, Sky decided to start rebranding their own stuff and then making um, making the the act the, the the rest of the more. Um, well, this these, this stuff was called role plays, and that was um... actually hold on. I'm going to put Sky on hold for a bit because I need to also mention um, the one to fear, the uh, the creator behind a few different um, horror movies, particularly some of which I think were also Herobrine related. But I think that might uh, that might be the same person. But this is where we get much more of the style of the um, of of the um, voice acted and, cinem and cinematic versions of role plays, which also happened around 2014. The one I remember particularly is the is the land of Madrid, because Madrid is spelled the same way as Madrid, which was the city that I had recently moved from. <laughs> so, so I was like, well, okay, this is interesting. I didn't quite get that the king was just called King Madrid, and that's why. It was just it was just. Uh, this particular um, derp-faced dictator, uh, who and and the revolution to actually overthrow him, and there was a few other elements of that. Unfortunately, it got cancelled after three episodes. But from what I remember, it actually was the first time that I kind of saw, I kind of saw Minecraft in the sense of like how Minecraft movies could make. The One to Fear is probably a pioneer in their own regard as well. But yeah, unfortunately, I can't too, I can't delve too much in that because yeah, stuff was. But but either way, that was. I, from what I remember, also there weren't too many mods that were used during that time. So actually, it kind of seems like I should rewatch some of that stuff to get some ideas of how that could actually be portrayed for um, for Mob Slayer. Considering that it was it was nice and simple, but it also but it was simple for a reason. And the idea of vanilla role plays is just again it's a lost art at this point. But yeah, back to the modded versions. What what uh, what Sky was doing with Sky Media around this time, ignoring all the behind the scenes cancel worthy uh, things that were also going on. I mean, purely from a media perspective. There were a few, was actually taking a few popular franchises and turning them into different role plays. SGC Barbarian can also be credited for that because it was uh, his idea for The Crafting Dead that also inspired Sky to do their own version of, of the, uh, well, their own POV from there. And obviously, that SGC Barbarian doing The Crafting Dead was essentially, of course, the same setup. The Crafting Dead mod itself, which was already referenced to The Walking Dead in its heyday. And and then and then going through that with a with a few with a few choice friends, afterwards inviting some other people around, including including Afmal. Afmal was a regular guest star during that. Starting from the episode Trigger Happy. But yeah, overall, the two POVs converged at one point, and that was another version of mainly first person, but also oh my, it's a deer here. <laughs> okay, I won't do. Too, I won't go this way too far. I don't want to disturb it. Um, what was I saying? POVs, blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, and then other things came out, like the uh, like the Maze Runner. And then also just another thing that wasn't really based on too much of anything too closely, but Pirates, which you could argue was Pirates of the Caribbean, but yeah. So there was that kind of role plays. And that was, again, and then also 
a few other things that are based on some Minecraft minigames themselves. The minigame of Teacher became the roleplay of Teacher, which then spawned into two spin-offs, Roommates and Minecraft University, which I've also talked about in reference to a certain other series, which I'm sure people will talk, best page will talk about like way, way sooner than now, but I'm, have to, I'm gonna have to do another pause to make sure I can get through this as well. And that is, finally, enter into the fray, Athmau. Okay, so I just tried to free up some space to record some more. So after an hour passed, I still have not managed to do so. Apart from one video that I had that was three gigabytes that was over two years old, that I'm pretty sure I have saved somewhere else. But oh well, I need to get back because I, I can't <laughs> dilly-dally for too long. Oh, I also said I was going this way, didn't I? Because, you know, the deer. <laughs> Which will be long gone by this point, but whatever. Okay, so actually before I talk about Athmal, a, t a couple of honorable mentions. Um, Sam Gladiator and It's Funny, I should also point out, um, as far as I'm aware, started a different version, once again, possibly a rebranching out of the, um, the Paul Soros Jr. method, but with adding more people, where it was improv-based. I think that's how that went down, particularly also because of, um, because of how both of their Yandere series influenced stuff that both Polar and Lady Mania, respectively, would do. So, uh, so, yeah, another person I don't like to talk about anymore, Polar. Yeah, a lot happened there. But that's, I can't really say much because I haven't seen their content too, well, as much. I've seen a few episodes, but that's the stuff that actually, fittingly enough, didn't grab me. Much like the Paul Soros Jr. actual stuff doesn't grab some people. And the first person perspective, depending on what era of Minecraft roleplays you grew up with, doesn't appeal to certain people, namely Aiden. That improv version of Minecraft roleplays, to me, doesn't quite work as well for what I want to do. Which is why that ties into back into Drama Club. But oh well, I've got about eight minutes, so let's talk about the person who created not only my favorite Minecraft roleplay, but my favorite show of anything ever. So Afmal also started out with a similar method to Paul Soros Jr. Uh, namely, actually showing off the different mods and creating a bit of a story around that. I talk about the days of Minecraft Diaries Origins. The time when she decided to show off different mods in this one world and note things down in a diary as a way to tie all of those things together. Which of course was the precursor to both Mod Mod World and Minecraft Diaries regular afterwards, which became, which became more of a more of a role play than before. It was more consistent. It used only a few of the basic uh, the, the basic mods that were that were involved in there, and it actually became a case of let's develop this medieval world and then have that have that have that blossom from there and have the NPCs once again breathe life into NPCs. Same style that Paul Soros Jr. had, except for with a key difference. This also applies to Mod Mod World to an extent, but I haven't seen as much of that. The NPCs can actually have pre-generated dialogue, and therefore it's much easier to make their personalities. There was one scene in Tale of Kingdoms where Paul attempted this with the Guildmaster. When there was an attack on the guild, there was one particular moment where he actually put the subtitles on screen. Otherwise, he would just do the classic thing of What's that, Guildmaster? You're saying blah 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 did blah blah blah? Oh, well, okay then. And went from there. That was where Athmal found the distinction and where, and where one of the biggest jumps in Minecraft roleplays happened. Now, I'm not going to pull a connection and say that Athmal was responsible for this. I don't actually know. There are a few examples, of course, with Iron and Coal coming before that on Athmal's channel where that was, that was partly pre-made into it. I guess Iron and Coal would be the other precursor to that phenomenon. But overall, that does... that that is a difference. And, of course, after some time, that led into the, the creation of a whole different world using both 
using characters from both of those shows and also a little bit of Minecraft dials sprinkled in there. And that, naturally, was My Street. And My Street, like I said, my favourite show of all time. It started off as the, off with the first person perspective, which has now uh, been shunned. And the NPCs, partly due to budget, around this time Minecraft Diaries had already started casting a few people as voice actors for a few cutscenes here and there. And that was, uh, and that was already, again, I, was, I guess I said it's another jump, but again, the, um, the one to fear had already been doing this. But this was more of a case of instead of what I think was friend collabs, professional voice actors being, being commissioned for their work and then becoming part of the AFMAL crew as that developed going forward. Which, of course, meant that because of budget issues, Minecraft Diary Season 2 did not have as much of this as it aired simultaneously to My Street, which was getting, which was performing better, and therefore I guess is where all the budget ended up going into for more cinematic scenes used at the beginning and end of those videos. But it, but regardless of that, even if it had zero voice acting, it still would have been really amazing because, again, the actual the the characters, I guess they already had the advantage of. They were already made in another show, so some of their personalities were imposed, sometimes a little bit too much, onto the rest of the roleplay, and then, and then they were, and then and then that carried through. So they already seemed larger than life going into the the, the first series of My Street, which meant it caught it caught on a lot more, and here we are now. My Street as well continue to evolve not only with its but with its budget but also with just as technology new 3d models were included it became fully cinematic after a couple of seasons it started introducing animations greater cinematography everything became so evolved to the extent where eventually it stopped being able to come out as regularly as it was before another huge reason for its success it was so prolific at first, and then suddenly it became a weekly, and then after a while, it trailed off because of animation issues with some of the animators leaving, etc., etc., and behind-the-scenes drama. So, yeah, a lot of things were a concern there, and eventually that meant, well, the Minecraft roleplays became unfeasible for Afmal, despite the fact that she had probably redefined the definite Minecraft roleplay itself in the minds of plenty of people. Now when Aiden talks about Minecraft roleplays, he refers mostly to the Afmau style. That's why we specify improv roleplays now, whereas before that was just what roleplaying was. Because as Afmau started with the Paul method, which is what the roleplays tend to be, and then evolved it into her own, which outperformed most of what was out there, and became the thing then to emulate. Which doesn't bring us back to Drama Club, but once again, I am running out of footage. Good lord, please excuse me.